Here is another film, another film to show you watercolour painting. Um, this time I'm going to show you painting in watercolour without any pencil or pen drawing first. This is the way that looking through all my stock of artworks, I discover that very much this is my main way of working in watercolour. And I've said before how much I love watercolour. Well, I really love the fun <laughs> and stress of working directly with watercolour onto paper and just seeing what happens. I really love how it frees me up working quickly directly on the watercolour, directly with the watercolour onto the paper. So for to show you a few examples, sometimes this technique can allow you to produce very very quick paintings. Mountains on South Uist here and you can see not that many brush strokes are making up the whole painting and lots of allowing the paint to bleed colour to colour. Another one. Bottlenose dolphins up in Aberdeen. A great spot to watch bottle, bottlenose dolphins is the harbour up there. And the um, thicker watercolour paint or darker watercolour paint here has been allowed on purpose to bleed out into very lightly coloured water, watery, watery paint all around to give the impression of the dolphins surfacing and then diving down and then surfacing and diving down. But of course you can also use watercolour in a far more detailed way such as here, looking from the hill up above Burnt Island and Fife across to Edinburgh, there's Arthur's Seat and Salisbury Crags and the buildings. And there's quite a lot of detail within this one, but again, no pencil underdrawing. And one with quite a lot of detail. Little Isle of May. A little Isle of May piece. Quite a detailed boat. Detailed foghorn. But loads and loads of the paper left untouched this time. No paint on it at all. So be brave and just try out your watercolours. Directly onto your surface, your paper. Um, this one you can see it's a really textured paper. You may like that, you may not like that. Very nice to try painting on it. And I've got some just a couple of areas of quite strong detail, mostly up at the top of the foghorn, that window, and the um, detailed lines of the solar panels at the bottom of the foghorn. But you can see the rest is very painterly with just really rough brush marks. I enjoy paintings where you see painterliness and you see little bits of detail. Similar in this one. If you look at that sky, there's lots and lots of paint bleeding into itself really no effort at detail, just capturing atmosphere. But the lighthouse is quite detailed and here in the foreground on this piece of exposed sandbank, just these little little dots which represent, well they may be birds, they may be seals, they may be stones and rocks and it's up to the viewer to decide that. I love using paint to represent things without having to put in the effort myself into painting each little thing. Try to find ways to let what paint naturally does represent your landscape or whatever it is you're painting. And it can be nice to have a little detail such as this foreground bird flying into the scene to pull your eye in with that thing. It might be a bird. It might be a person walking into a landscape. It might be a path leading off through the hills or along uh, through the park. And it allows you to imagine you're walking into that painting yourself. So I am going to have a shot at painting the view from my window just now. As always, I'll say I'm going to try to do this quickly. This is a sketch which you have seen, may have seen in one of my other videos, a uh, window sketch. This is my studio window in Burnt Island. 
looking up at this hill called the Bin, B-I-N-N, and a communications tower on top. This is the paper I'm going to work on just now. I shall put this here so that you can see it some of the time. Okay. So here's some of my ultramarine blue, which I use so much. Straight away I'm thinking, no, I don't want the rooftop to be quite that blue. So I'm adding some brown in there. As I said in another watercolour video, I really don't much believe in rights and wrongs within art. Just give it a go, don't worry if you're not doing it the way it conventionally would be done. I need a piece of masking tape to stop my paper slipping around, so I've torn a piece of masking tape, folding it over onto itself to create a loop where it's sticky all around, and I'm just putting a piece of that under each corner of this paper, two of the corners of the paper, or the edges. Okay. Right, so I seem to be starting this particular painting by drawing in the outlines of some of the houses of my neighbours across the street. Just the very tops of the roofs. And it's really up to you how much detail you put into a painting. Do not feel you have to paint every window in a building, every leaf on a tree, every slate on a roof. You definitely don't have to do that. Finding ways of suggesting that there are details there without actually painting in every detail. That's a good way to try to work. And honestly, the more that you paint, the more all these things start to come naturally to you. And I've been painting for a lot of years. So don't worry if you find it hard to work like this to start with. Just try to enjoy the paint. If you find perspective really hard, then just don't think about perspective. Just just paint as you see it and at a later date if you want you can learn about perspective. You could represent the fact that this is a slated roof by just having a few marks like this here and there. Okay, I'm going to look at the hill up above, the bin, and there's a really dark atmospheric sky up there today, which is what I love, much as in that sketch, this sketch. I've just very gently touched the brush onto the paper. I'm wondering if you'd like me to zoom in. My phone's quite precariously balanced on top of a stool, a box, two pieces of wood, and with my two, two volume The Birds of Scotland, very, very heavy books on top to hold it all down. Um, yeah, okay. You can use your brush on its side. 
I'm doing this to give the impression of all the all the rocks up there on the side of the bin. It's really steep up at the top of this hill with not much vegetation on the at the top of the cliff face looking towards me. There we go. And I'm going to put a few marks up into the sky just now. Thinking about changing brush. Very hard to decide when your painting is finished. Some watercolour paintings, really, you can get away with putting so much, so little paint onto it, and you just sometimes get a little painting which is just so beautiful where it's required very little detail. Others you work away at and work away at, and sometimes, often, one takes a painting too far. I certainly often do that and think, I wish I had left it as it was half an hour ago or an hour ago or a day ago or a week ago. So that's quite a good impression of a slaty East Coast Scotland rooftop. Um, you can see, you can hopefully see here that I'm now dipping my brush onto the ultramarine blue without much water on my brush and that really shows up on the rooftop the bright blue of ultramarine and that's really changed the way the rooftop looks possibly for the better possibly not I could do the same with the brown if I wanted there to be more Darker brown in there. Like that. Just going back to my finer brush for a little bit. And if you do any work yourself, based on any of these videos, please do let me see. Let us see what you're doing. I'm doing this video for um, Room for Art, and it will be available on the Room for Art Facebook page. Now I'm putting a bit of dark, this is raw umber, a dark brown. I very often can't tell you what I'm doing in advance of me doing it because it just, as I'm painting, it just happens and I just find my brush doing something and sometimes I think, oh yeah, I wish I'd thought of that and other times I think, oh dear, I don't think you should have done that brush. Okay, back up to that hill in that sky. There are lots of treetops up there. So, I'm going to get some of them in here. It's not really a very bright day. Possibly this green is brighter than I want it. There's a lovely touch of bright green grass up on the... There's a field up there, just on the far left. And that is a proper bright, rich green and... Um, amazing views from up there, well from all the way up here. I've seen a cuckoo perched on a fence just there a few years ago. Haven't even heard one this year, but I've hardly been up there during lockdown. In fact I haven't. Well, Oren's just woken up from his nap. I'm just going to pause this video. Excuse me. 
Hi, I'm back. Orin's up from his nap and ready for his afternoon snack. Okay, so I do think that this green is looking a bit too green. Going away from my painting for a couple of minutes just then. It's very good for making me decide that. So, not quite sure how I'm going to remedy it yet. Here's some of the blue which I've used on the roof, on the rooftops. I'm adding some of that on top to bring more coolness to the treetops. Oh dear, 15 minutes already. This was yet another video which I was going to try to keep it, well, <laughs> 10 minutes. You may be able to hear a little bit of gentle crying in the background. It's one of Orin's less happy wake-ups. Funny, some naps, actually I suppose it's just like us. Sometimes you wake up in the morning feeling very awake and other times you wake up thinking that you should be in bed for quite a few hours more. Well, he's feeling that. Okay, um, there's actually a really nice reddish touch to the rocks on the bin. So I've mixed up this using my alizarin crimson and some brown and I'm bringing some of that on top as well. I do hope you can't hear Orn too much right now, I can. <laughs> And now that I've put this, these touches of red up here, I'm realising the slates on the rooftop over here, they're not just blue, there is a lot of red within them, pinkish within them, there's this kind of yellow ochre within them as well, so I'm going to try to bring touches of that in too. I also need to think about the windows. Am I going to leave them all white like that? I think that they would benefit from me darkening them. And this is going to have a dramatic sky, which I've only just started working on. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to make something, going to make something of these windows. Here's a pink shutter on this one. Let's paint that in. There we go. And there's a nice blue green one over here. I'm going to paint this in. And there's a blue one here, but I'm thinking I don't want blue because there's an awful lot of blue in that roof already, so... Let's make it another red one. Possibly that's too red. And then the bits of the window where there aren't window... Um, where there aren't curtains or blinds showing. Actually, right now they're very dark black almost. So I'm doing that now. They're not reflecting any bright blue sky just now. These chimney stacks, they're the yellowy red sandstone of all our buildings around here. 
There we go. When you're doing painting, of course, if there's something at your window that you don't like, that yucky building or that telegraph pole, you don't have to add it into your painting if you don't fancy it. Um, right, I'm going to stop this pretty soon. I'm just going to do a bit more on the sky. I'm having a dark one. Look, hardly thinking about where the paint is going. You can add, you can sp splash your brush into your jar of water and add water on top like that so that the paint you've already applied starts running. You can use a cloth or a napkin from cafes, as I've told you before. I collect the napkins rather than letting them go to waste. No cafes recently. So here we go, this could be a finished rooftop scene. But as I usually do, I'm just going to do a little bit more. <laughs> I've noticed I haven't put the communications tower up here yet, but if I put it in now, it's going to really bleed. Oh good, no, it's not bleeding too much, that's great. The paint under there has obviously dried fairly well. And because I've brought that dark outline up there, I'm thinking, okay, I'm actually going to go darker down here too. what I said before about not knowing when to stop. But I also love that about paintings. They evolve as you paint them, they change and change. They can end up extremely different from what you had anticipated when you first decided to paint that scene. Okay, I'll call that a finished painting. So now have a look at that finished painting and then realise that when your painting's finished, when it's dry, when it's not dry, you can decide to drastically change things as well. And in a future video, I'll probably show you some of that. But just here I'm thinking, Let's warm up the bin to contrast it with the dark brooding sky. This is yellow ochre. And to contrast it with the ultramarine blue. Oh yeah, I like this more. With the ultramarine blue on the rooftops. So look, here's another finished painting. <laughs> that communications tower is looking too brown. I don't think that's visible on the camera. So I've put some blue on top, which is now bleeding into the sky above. So I shall try dabbing onto it. Dabbing on, like this.
You can get so engrossed. I can get so engrossed in painting. I just love it, love it. That corner there. That should be darker. So you can pause this video at various points and decide to yourself or go back through it and decide to yourself which of the potentially finished paintings did you prefer? Should I have stopped at 10 minutes? Mm, yeah, nice. Nice Scottish storm. Okay, the end. Thank you for watching.